All right, we are taking a look at Unit 3, Module 1, Session 4. The name of this home connection is Fraction and Division Story Problems. It's a two-pager, okay? So we've got a, a pretty beefy story problem that's about pizza. Let's take a look. On Tuesday, David and three friends. So three friends plus David sounds like four, right? David and his three friends shared a large pizza. That's this pizza right here. For an after-school treat. Each of the four boys ate the same amount of pizza. Okay? On Thursday, David shared two large pizzas with seven friends from his soccer team. Each of the eight team members got equal amounts. Okay? So in this story problem, it is saying that David and three friends, that's four people, ate this pizza. And then on Thursday, David and seven friends, that's eight people, ate these two pizzas. And we need to split up this pizza so everybody gets the same size of slices. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, and then we're going to dig in. Well, if four people ate this pizza, I need to cut it into four pieces. We've been talking a lot about fourths, so if you cut it in half, and then you cut each half in half, we have four slices of pizza. Each one of these pizzas is one of four pieces, which is why we say it's one-fourth, because it's one of four pieces. If I were to add four of the pieces all together, I would have four of four pieces, right? So. That would be Tuesday's pizzas. Now, somehow, I have to give eight people the same amount of pizza. Uh, and let's just start by splitting each one in half. How many people can I feed if I split these pizzas in half? Well, I have one, two, three, four halves, right? I can only feed four people. Well, what if I split each one into four pieces? Well, now I have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slices of pizza, and I have eight people. I still cut the, each pizza into four slices, which still means that each slice of pizza is one-fourth. And sometimes you can think of it as saying that's one of the four pieces, right? This is one of the four pieces of this pizza. Here's another one of the four pieces of the pizza so on and so forth. Oh, there's a little math joke for you. Okay, so in, in this, I'm gonna use maybe a different color here. David's one of the people, right? So we'll say David got this slice, okay? And on Thursday, David once again is one of the people. He had seven friends, so his other friends got to eat the rest of the pizza. So what fraction of a large pizza did David eat on Tuesday? Here's Tuesday, he ate, well, it says right there, one-fourth. What fraction of a large pizza did David eat on Thursday? Well, if this is David's slice, once again, he ate one-fourth. The next question says, did David eat more pizza on Tuesday or on Thursday? Well, on Tuesday, he ate one-fourth of a pizza. On Thursday, he ate one-fourth of a pizza. So, no. Uh, he ate the same amount. So, um, we could say, I was thinking of the best way to answer that. You could say neither. Um, he ate the same. That would be okay. And then three mathematical observations that you can make from the sketches uh, for this situation. Well, Here's one observation. Four people, one pizza. That was one day, right? I'm going to do this in a different color. On the other day, there were eight people, and there were two pizzas. What do you notice about this number, how these numbers compare to each other? To turn 4 into 8, you would double it. Let's see if I have another color here on my pen. 
Oh, I'm gonna, oh, I need, to, how about I start over and I explain this a little better. I didn't realize you couldn't see it. Here's the first day, four people, one pizza. The other day it was eight people and two pizzas. And if you compare these numbers, the four, if you double it, you get eight. The one, if you double it, you get two. In spite of that, um, the equal slices stay the same. So that's maybe more than a few observations, but that's okay. Uh, this is going to be uh, uh, a lot of work on your end, but I will help explain it just a little bit. Writing story problems that match these equations. For example, 13 is going to be divided by 4. The answer is 3 remainder 1. The gym teacher has 13 playground balls for the 4th grade classrooms to share. How many balls will each classroom get? Well, that answer would be three with one ball left over that the class doesn't get to share. Now, here's the interesting part. I have 13 divided by four again, but here, instead of a remainder one, they're going to say that there's a quarter left for everybody. Here is another 13 divided by four. And instead of one-fourth, we have 25 cents, which is the same. One quarter of a dollar is 25 cents, right? And then we'll have a new number here, which we'll talk about later. So let me just give you a couple hints about maybe a problem like this. In this case, you need to write a story problem where the thing you're dividing, this thing here, I'll maybe draw an arrow like this, this thing, um, has to be dividable. It's something that you can cut into quarters. If you say, I have 13 iPods and four friends, I'm going to give everybody three and one-fourth iPods. Nope, because you just broke that iPod into four pieces and now it doesn't work. It could be like um, you're going to divide uh, cookies, pies, candy, Things that you can break up, okay? Liquid, something that is dividable. If you divide it and it breaks, then I would not choose an object like that. B, you can probably guess because we're talking about $3.25, that this has to be money, and you're going to be dividing it in four ways. Maybe it's $13 for four people, um, I'll let you get creative about that. And then your final story problem um, maybe might be a little bit more simple because we know that 4 times 4 is 16. So if I take 16 things and I divide it into four groups, each of those four groups will have four in it. So you're going to have to think of something that is 16 that you would want to split into four different groups. Okay? And I'm going to leave those up to you. Sorry if that's a little bit difficult, but um, I think you can do it. I really do. Okay. Uh, the challenge question. Oh, this is a, this could be a tough one. Let's set it up and see what happens. Latoya had a large enough collection of basketball cards. Had a large collection of basketball cards. I don't know where I came up with that word. She decided to give half of them to her friend Aaron, and a fourth of them to her brother. She still has 75 cards left. How many cards did she start with? Well, I tell you what, let's do that. So let's take, let's, let's draw a circle. These are all of LaToya's cards. She decided to give half of them to her friend Aaron. So cut all of her cards in half, and we're going to give half of them to Aaron. And a fourth of them to her brother. So I need to make a fourth. So I'm gonna. So I'm gonna. This would be kind of like an imaginary line here. We're gonna give all of that to Aaron, but I'm gonna give one fourth to brother. Okay. And this is one half. Okay. 
she still has 75 cards left. So this is how many cards Aaron has. So we're trying to figure out how many cards did she start with. Well, this is a fourth, and this is a fourth. So these two numbers have to be the same. And I'm going to let this challenge be a little bit more challenging by not telling you how it ends. And hopefully you can go to your teacher and you can be impress them with your knowledge. But if this is a fourth and this is a fourth, then both of these numbers are going to be the same. Okay? Now, what is a half going to be if this is 75 and this is 75? Okay? One of the things that we learned when we were doing our fraction pieces, if you remember uh, what the, the fraction tiles, one of the things that we learned, I'm going to try to draw this as well as I can, that one-fourth and another one-fourth are the same as one-half. Okay? So think of it this way. If this was, uh, I'm going to do, do change colors here. Um, if this bit, this quarter, this fourth is 75, and this has to be the same, and this half has to be a combination of these two. If you can combine all of these together, you will know how many cards she had. And I don't want to give any more away, but um, if you have questions, you can always ask a teacher, you can ask a friend, you can ask an adult that feels mathy, um, happy hunting, good work mathematicians. I'll check you later.